Hi, in this video I talk about an advanced lithium battery charger that I made using the Texas Instruments BQ25896. It's a single cell charger. Uh, it charges up to f uh, 3 amps of current. It's uh, I2C squared, so I'm using an uh, AT Mega 32U4 to control it. Um, uh, it also acts as a power bank with up to 2 amps of current. It's got multiple inputs and outputs. And it works with 18650 batteries, 21700 or 2700 batteries. Here are some of the features and functions of this charger power bank. It runs using an 80 mega 32U4 microprocessor. The charging IC BQ25896 supports up to 3 amps and uh, 3 amps of charge current and 2 amps of boost uh, current. Uh, it has a rotary encoder for changing the settings. Um, it has uh, two WS2812 uh, LEDs for in indicating various statuses, USB C input and output. USB micro input and output and um, because it's a micro it's limited to um, uh, one amp. It's mainly used for program programming the uh, microprocessor. Uh, it's got a uh, USB type A uh, output can also be used as an input if, if the appropriate cable. Um, it has a SSD1306 OLED display and um, it has reverse battery protection put it the wrong way around and nothing catches fire there's a NTC for mister here to make sure things don't overheat there's another for mister next to the IC to make sure the board doesn't get too hot um, there's a uh, M2 SSD that I've cut down to size and glued onto it I will take this apart to show everything let's have a look at the menu so from the main menu at the top you see the uh, whether it's on battery mode or if you put an adapter in it will detect the type of adapter all this can be changed through code I have defaulted it to um, default to 3.25 amps of input and it will adjust accordingly if it detects the VBUS voltage drop um, it shows you things like um, the charge status whether it's complete fast charge pre-charge or I think it goes into uh, pre-charge if the battery voltage is too low so it's all controlled constant current constant voltage there is uh, it shows you your VBUS, VSYS, VBAT the charging current and the IC uh, temperature uh, if you press the charge button nothing will happen because there's no adapter if you go into OTG it turns on the boost mode uh, blue LED is flashing there and then if we go into setup we can change things like the charge voltage there's a store mode as well for storing batteries if they're not going to be used for a while you can change the charge current lower it go all the way down to 500 milliamps up to 3 amps then you have the OTG voltage and the output current which you can reduce to uh, half an amp uh, you can rotate the display uh, you can change the sleep timer so this is when the OLED goes to sleep um, uh, which uh, draws one milliamp of current so this feature is enabled when um, it's running on battery now and um, let's say you've got the boost mode on you don't really want to burn the OLED out uh, you can adjust the LED brightness and the auto power off puts it in full ship mode or what Texas instrument called ship, ship mode. It's basically um, full power off. off um, it's, it disconnects the battery from all the circuitry uh, which means it only draws a few micro amperes of uh, I think leakage current um, so the battery won't drain when you're not using this. Um, I'll take this apart. Okay I've now removed it from the enclosure so as you can see um, it's 
uses a lot of surface mount components. Most of the capacitors and resistors are 0603. There are some, like the charger IC, um, was uh, installed using a pick and place machine, so not everything was hand, hand soldered. Uh, if I remove the battery, the OLED display I made, um, it's designed to be modular, modular, so you can rotate the display. It works both ways. I've used the minimum amount of components on the um, OLED display. Uh, there's no need for a voltage regulator for this. The AT Mega 32U4 runs on um, 3.3 volts at 8 megahertz to keep the uh, current uh, consumption as low as possible. Um, you have a single voltage regulator here. Um, there's the charger IC. The, these are your um, reverse polarity protection MOSFETs. USB-C input output. Um, the inductor here is what's used to boost, uh, buck and boost the um, voltages depending on the input and output. Um, there is a buzzer here. Um, there's a micro USB input, a reset uh, button for the 80 mega 3 t 4 got the rotary encoder an ICSP header for the initial programming WS2812 LEDs USB type A um, input and output so there's the back heat sink is glued down using thermal glue and it's close up the components. I'll talk about the schematics later. Okay, I've connected this uh, to a charger at the moment. So if I so it's charging at uh, 2.8 uh, well, 2.8 amps. So ICHG is 2.8 amps and the battery voltage is now on 3.9 volts. So I've got a thermal camera there. So the charging chip is at 57 degrees. As you can see the surrounding areas are um, very cool at the moment. If I have a look at back of it the heat sink is about 40 degrees at the highest temperature so yeah quite reasonable if you think about it a TP4056 um, would be running a lot um, hotter than this um, so this does use a uh, I believe it uses a uh, yeah, a buck mode to it's not linear, it uses a buck and boost, um, it uses the inductor to step up, step down the voltages. So, three amps of current that's a lot better than the TP4056. Let's take a look at the schematic for the charger. So, here we have the, uh, the main schematic um, for the main board. It consists of an 80 mega 32U4 in a standard configuration. I've used an 8 mega X crystal so I could use a 3.3 volt power supply to uh, keep the current consumption down. Um, I've added quite a few extra uh, bypass uh, capacitors, filter capacitors to um, just make sure there's no noise in, on, on the chip. Uh, the BQ2596 is in a st standard uh, reference configuration with some of the resistor values calculated. There's a few pins that I've omitted because it's not necessary and some of the pins are actually bypassed uh, via the code. The rest of the circuitry is really just things like LED, rotary encoder, the voltage regulator, USB input, buzzer circuit and here you have the uh, reverse uh, battery polarity protection. Um, it's just done using MOSFETs um, to switch one off or the other uh, on depending on um, 
which MOSFET has the voltage applied to it. Let's have a look at the circuit board. So I've made it as compact as possible. Most of the uh, components are 603. So things like the charger IC and the MOSFET here and the crystal. Um, I use the, uh, the SMT, uh, SMT service from JLC PCB. Uh, I don't have any equipment to solder these. Let's have a look at the photo view. Got the top side, bottom side. All the trace whip uh, for the, the high current has been designed to make sure free amps is can be carried. Um, the 3D view. Okay, and now as you can see, there's two headers here um, for the uh, OLED. You've got the, the polarity protection MOSFETs, the inductor for the BQ2596. These components are part of the BQ2596, USB input and output, ICSP header, uh, USB programming port. It also can be used for um, charging and uh, output as well. And you've got your output here as well, which can be used as an input if you have the correct cable or mega cable for it. You've got the buzzer here, and we've got the crystal, the reset button, a couple of LEDs, and there's a D13 LED here just for diagnostics. You've got a fuse for the 80 mega. And if we have a look at the underside, you've got the 80 mega here. So this here is the SSD1306 um, schematic. It is again based on the reference design. Um, there's no voltage um, regulator. So this here is the reset circuit, which I um, copied from the um, Adafruit SSD1306 design. It's just um, when you power on the 80 mega, it just resets um, the display to make sure um, it powers on the correct sequence. The reason there's two reset circuits is because of the um, chip shortages. One of these isn't available, so I was able to only get hold of, I think it's the SR, which is the pins are reversed. So I've designed it so whatever chip is available, you can use. So let's have a look at the 2D layout. The dis display is designed to be flipped over. Um, so the actual PCB is exactly the same size of the OLED display. And you can see the two reset um, chips. And you only have to use one. So it is a minimalistic design. So no onboard regulator here. And yeah, we got the Photo view, this is the main side and the bottom side. And you've got the 3D view. So R4 and R3 are optional. They're the uh, SCL SDA uh, resistors. Um, they actually are already on the main board, so they're not needed here. Here we have the BQ25896. INO file. I've used Arduino IDE 2.10. So all the libraries that I've used are listed here and the version numbers that I used. I will try and keep this up to date. Um, the only thing that I had to modify was the Adafruit SSD1306 library. For some reason it comes with a splash screen um, which is loaded into the program. Um, you have to manually edit it out. The, according to the Adafruit documentation, there is a parameter. If you change it, it's supposed to do it for you, but it doesn't. It still loads it into program. Program just disables it from showing up. However, the memory is still used. So without editing this file, this uh, file will not fit the 80 mega 32U4. There's a not, not a lot of things that need to be changed. Um, if anything, you would probably change some of the default values. Um, for example, the 
the, the voltage selection, uh, the current selection and so on. So I've put some values in and they can be changed, but it will need to be referenced against the register map to make sure it is a valid, uh, valid uh, value. So all the code is commented. Um, I've created a lot of functions to simplify things. So when it initially loads up, it disables the watchdog timer. If you don't disable the watchdog timer, then if the, the chip effectively keeps resetting itself back, it starts up the uh, real time ADC and it disables the charger. So when you plug in the power adapter, you don't want it to start charging the battery autonomously. So, um, Settings from the EEPROM are loaded if they're available. Um, this uh, OLED, most of the stuff is actually displaying the data on the OLED. I've tried to optimize the code as possible. It does take up 99% of the flash memory. Um, so as you can see, it's not a lot of code about 766 lines if you go to the top from the last compile time it uses up 28536 bytes out of 28672 so 99% here we have the driver library for the BQ2596 I use Visual Studio um, to make this um, we have the reg h file here which is basically the register map and I've put a lot of comment in with with um, what a lot of the values are in case you do want to change the defaults or hard code something in so all the register maps are in here the header file contains all the functions and the CPP file the main library file um, contains the actual function it's functions uh, themselves which can obviously are called through uh, the Arduino um, IDE uh, INO file so if you reference this library you'll be able to call a lot of these functions so um, th these are self-explanatory what they do for example we'll set OTG voltage I don't need to put a comment against this 